So, uh, if you've been watching these videos about arrays, uh, whether or not I mentioned it, I probably did, but I don't specifically recall, you would have noticed this. An array is a fixed size. When we declare an array, when we make an array, when we say I'm going to have an array of bubbles, right? When I say I'm going to have a, a, an array of bubbles, I have to say it is a new array of bubbles, and I have to specify the number of bubbles I want to have. I have to say, are there going to be 10 bubbles, 100 bubbles, 1,000 bubbles? That number, that is the size of the array. The size of that array can never change. If later in the program I suddenly want 200 bubbles, I can't just add an extra 100 bubbles there. I could delete the array and make a new array and do all sorts of crazy stuff, but an array is a fixed size. So we, this is obviously a, a severe limitation. I mean, there are plenty of reasons why a fixed size is perfectly good for you. If you are making some sort of a, a, a game and it has 10 players, then you just need an array of 10 players, 10 scores, 10 player names, right? You don't, there's not suddenly ever going to be 12 players or 9 players. It's always a 10 player game. And, and there's many instances where an array of fixed size is totally what you need, and that's great. But there are also lots of scenarios where you want to start with no bubbles on the screen. And then a moment happens and a few bubbles come out. And then another moment happens and now there's six bubbles. And there's 12 and then there's 15 and then suddenly all the bubbles go away and there's no bubbles anymore. I don't know why I'm talking about this strange world of bubbles, but you can imagine lots of different scenarios where you want to have this flexible number of elements on the screen. We need to develop strategies for doing this. And there are many. So um, there's, there's a couple that I'm going to just sort of briefly gloss over and uh, point you um, in, uh, uh, towards um, other uh, information about. For one, if you look through the processing reference under array, you'll see that there are a whole set of functions. There's one called append. Uh, I don't remember what the other ones are called. It's funny because this one after me. The last time I did this video, uh, shorten, slice, there's a, there's a lot of functions. And what these functions allow you to do is manipulate the size of the array. And, and you might choose someday to use those functions. I encourage you to go look up, <coughs> sorry, I have a cough. I encourage you to go look up those functions in the reference, see how they work, see if they apply to you. But let me just make something very, very clear. Let's say we're going to use the function append, and we have an array of three elements. What's actually happening in the magical computer land is not suddenly that we're appending another element to the end of this array and it becomes bigger. That's what's going, that's sort of like the result that we want. But what processing really has to do in order to make this larger array is it has to make a new array that has four spots in it, has to take the first three, copy them over, and then now we have a new spot to add an additional bubble. So while this works, and the append function is something you could use, it's not exactly the most efficient. And also, the syntax for append is slightly awkward and a little bit weird. So I don't love use. I, I love that these functions exist, and I'm very happy about them. But I don't love using them, and I personally don't use them that often. The, the, the solution that I generally use the most often is something called an array list. You can also find the array list in the processing reference. You can find an example under topics advanced data. I will link to that below about how uh, that uses an array list for a flexible size, a flexibly, a, a, a list of things that has flexible size. You can start with nothing, add a bunch, delete a bunch. An array is great. It's an object. It has functions. You say you can say remove, add, get, add a whole bunch of things. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with an array list. I think I just said array earlier when I meant array list. I meant array list. So an array list is something I encourage you to look into. And there will be a video that covers the, an array list more specifically um, after this one at some points, or a link to a video. Anyway, whatever. The, don't worry. I got you covered. I'll eventually I'll do something about an array list. But what I want to do is actually show you a solution that I think is useful in in some scenarios, but also just it helps you think about how, um, how you can manage. Uh, 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 it just helps you practice and kind of use arrays more in an interesting way. Ugh. I was doing so well, but this is, you know, whatever. I'm doing the best I can. Um, you know, this is my second attempt, and we're just going to keep going through it. OK, so what, let's, let's give ourselves a scenario to work with. Here's a scenario. Uh, well, so we have, this, um, we have this example which we notice we have 100 bubbles. We make 100 bubbles. They have some random size. And then we call all these functions. And all these bubbles are floating up on the screen. So let's, let's, let's build in this uh, scenario for ourselves, a little exercise for ourselves. What if, when this program starts, 
what we want is for there to be no bubbles on the screen. And every time I click the mouse, a, a new bubble appears. How would we do that? Well, one thing that you can always do with an array is that you could always say, you know what, I'm going to make an array of a million bubbles. Is that a million? A million bubbles. And then that way, sometimes if I want to use 10, or if I want to use 200, if I want to use 300, I can just use part of the array. So let's leave ourselves at 100, and let's think about what we would do. First of all, let me show you something. Look at this loop down here. Int i equals 0, i is less than bubbles dot length. What does this loop do? i is 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. It's all the way up to 99. It's counting through every element of the array. What if I just said 10 here? Well, even though there's 100 bubbles in that array, I'm only looping through the first 10, right? If I say 0, how many do I have on the screen? I'm not looping through any of them. If I say 50, What's happening? I only have 50 of them. Now, of course, if I said 150, we've got a new problem on our hands. Array index out of bounds exception. Array index out of bounds exception. I think, ooh, and, and I think you've probably, I probably mentioned this before, but this is the error you get if you try to access an element that doesn't exist. When your array has 10 spots and you go for number 15, that index is out of bounds. <coughs> so watch out for that error. <coughs> So we do have a limit here when there's only 100, but we notice we can change how many we're act actively using at any given point. So what am I doing here? I keep changing this number manually and running it again. What, is, what should that indicate to you? That might indicate to you we could use a variable. So what if I had a variable that I called total, and I set that variable to 0? And then I put total down here. Well, now when I run it, 0 elements. When I run it with 10, 10 bubbles. Well, this is a variable now. What could I do? I could say void mouse pressed total equals total plus 1. Look at this. No bubbles. Let's hope this works. Click the mouse, one bubble. Click the mouse, two bubbles. Click the mouse, three bubbles. Click the mouse, four bubbles. Click, 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 click. And I'm adding bubbles. So even though we've made an array of 100 bubbles, if we impose some logic where we only use a certain amount of the array, then more of the array, and then what could I do? I could add key pressed. Ah. The camera just went off, but you know what I'm doing. I'm going to turn it back on. If I add a key pressed, <laughs> this one's not going very well, total equals total minus 1, and I run this again, what can I do? I can say, hey, let me add a bunch of bubbles. Let me delete those bubbles. So we can see here that we can manipulate how much of that array that we're using. And this is not such a bad strategy. And you know, even though an array list is probably ultimately going to give us more flexibility, more power, and just it, sort of more ease in manipulating the size of an array, this is a nice sort of um, scenario to practice with and kind of get a sense of as an option in, in, in how you use an array. Now, so let me give you some thoughts. If you want to take this a step further into an exercise, here's what I would say to you. Number one is, what do you do when total gets to 100? Right? Total equals total plus 1. There's still only 100 bubbles in that array. What do you do? Do you set total back to 0? How can you keep reusing it? Think about what, what scenario you would do there. The other thing you might think about is, how could this happen autonomously? So how could you just say, every frame, there's like a a 1% chance that a new bubble would appear. Could you pick a random number and test where that random number is? And like, what if I picked a random number between 0 and 100? And if that random number is less than 20, does that mean there's a 20% chance? I think I just gave the answer. But implement that. So you don't have to click the mouse to add bubbles. What if it just happens every so often randomly? So those are some two things you could try doing. But mostly what I would say to you is find your thing that you've been working on that has an array and just sort of play with the idea of only using part of the array. Um, could you sort of turn objects in the array on and off? You know, that's another thing we could do. What if in the bubble object, here's something you could try. What if in the bubble object, you put, we put a Boolean variable, and I said active, and it was false. And then I have some if statements in there where I only do the stuff to the bubble if it's active. And what if when I click, I sort of activate different bubbles? That could be a way that I could also manage certain things to be there or not there at any given moment. So those are some things you could try, some ideas. Uh, maybe I'll try to implement that and, and put it somewhere if it's not there. And you come to this video, email me and remind me. But, um, but uh, what I would say is, um, the, the, the next thing you should be looking at, though, is at some point is using an array list. And um, I will um, 
the next video, or, or I think I have a video already that's from the, let me just say it. I have a video from the Nature of Code series that I'm pretty sure uh, goes through an array list, and what I'm going to do is link to that from, from this video so you can go move on to that if you're interested in an array list. And if that doesn't exist, then I'll make one. Okay, uh, I babbled for too long. I hope this one was okay, and I will see you later. The next set of videos will just be about, I think the next set of videos are going to make are about images and pixels, image processing, loading images from the camera, all sorts of cool, fun stuff that hopefully you will enjoy. Okay, goodbye.